Hey Happy Valley, I'm Brooke Steak, joined alongside by Zach Lambert and our third host Seth Engel. And today we're going to be bringing you the latest news from Penn State and State College. Coming up today, Zach and Seth break down the decision to allow freshmen into Penn State football's final spring practice. Then we have a special sit-down interview with Sam McGuire who shares her experience with getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And make sure to stick around until the end for a special musical performance by Melody Munitz. But first, here are the latest headlines. In lieu of the recent pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the Bryce Jordan Center will distribute the Moderna vaccine instead. The pause will be in effect until at least April 20th. The Penn State men's soccer team defeated Michigan 4-1 Wednesday in the Big Ten Tournament semifinal game. The Nittany Lions will travel to Indiana to take on the top-seeded Hoosiers Sunday at 5 p.m. The Cleveland Cavaliers signed ex-Penn State men's basketball player Lamar Stevens to a multi-year deal on Wednesday. Stevens signed a two-way deal with the Cavaliers as an undrafted free agent and has played in 37 games this season, while averaging 4.4 points and 2.5 rebounds per game. The 320 Coalition held a solidarity protest in downtown State College on Tuesday in lieu of the Dante Wright shooting that took place in Minnesota last week. People gathered by the Allen Street gate to demand, quote, justice for Dante. Coming up next, we'll have myself and Seth discuss freshmen being allowed into Penn State football's final spring practice. Hello everyone, my name is James Langan, the Collegian's resident meteorologist and co-host of the award-winning podcast, We Are Trying Our Best. And here's the weather outlook for next week. So going into Saturday, it's going to be a bit rainy. You might want to stay inside, play some Xbox, play some PlayStation if you can afford it. Now on Sunday, it's going to be a cool, sunny 60 degrees. So make sure you go out, bask in the sun, and show off that summer bod you've been working towards. Now as we head into the week, it's going to be a little rainy on and off. But Tuesday on 420, you might want to, the sun may be coming, the sun might be blazing a little, if you know what I mean. So then on Wednesday and Thursday, it's going to get better and better, but it's going to be a little little cold. That might just be a day to take a walk or something or hang out with a good friend like one of mine. Now that's the weather for this week. Be sure to come back next week for, wait, what is this show called? Be sure to tune back next week into Hey Happy Valley for Looking Forward with Langan to see what's going to go on next week. Penn State football will be hosting its final spring practice at Beaver Stadium this upcoming weekend. But Penn State announced on March 17th that freshmen will be the only ones allowed in attendance this year. Seth and Zach, what do you guys think about this? I think that it's really unfair to the seniors. You know, these are kids that lost their senior football season to COVID, and they didn't get to go to any of the games. Yeah, at least they got to watch them on TV, but they didn't get to go to any of them. And now they have one more shot to go in Beaver Stadium one last time, and they get it taken away from them. So I really don't think it's fair. Um, Seth, I don't know what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, I mean, coming from a freshman, even I have to agree with that point where, uh, you know, it does seem a little unfair to the seniors. Um, and I also think that Beaver Stadium is big enough where they could fit maybe freshmen on one side and then seniors on another. Because, I mean, when you look at it, like freshmen do need do need that experience here at Penn State after missing out on a whole fall season. Um but, you know, seniors also need that kind of send off that they didn't get in the fall. Um, but I, I think they they really could have done two sides. Maybe you make one side blue and you make one side white and it just makes the whole um, experience more fun that way. Um, but, yeah, I'd have to agree with you. Yeah, there are a lot of different ways they could have went with this. And to just completely exclude the seniors, it seems really unfair to them. You know, they paid their dues. They've been here the whole time. They've been here all four years some of them longer, and to not get that one final time in Beaver Stadium as a student, it really stinks. And I really feel for a bunch of them. I know I have a bunch of friends who are seniors. They were all disappointed. So even though the blue-white game, usually what it is this year, just the spring practice, isn't the most entertaining game to watch, it's still fun to be in the stadium in spring experiencing football and to have that taken away. I mean, you just really got to feel for these kids. Yeah, exactly. And I think it really shows – that first day where they announced that there were going to be only freshmen allowed in. Um, and you just saw that kind of outcry from, you know, not even just seniors, but Penn State alumni, um, sophomores, juniors, um, who also thought that it was unfair, um, not even asking for themselves to be able to go to the game, um, because it really is just a final scrimmage when it comes down to it, but it really shows how much football means to the student body here, um, especially those that are, you know, about to be on their way to 
the real world, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, I do think it is, it is pretty unfair um, in that, in that uh, standpoint, but uh, you know, it does show how important football really is to Penn State. Yeah, just to go off both your guys' point real quick, at first, um, I was really feeling for my senior friends, obviously, but just from my own perspective, I just transferred to Penn State last fall. I was like, you know, I'm technically a freshman right now, too. Why aren't they doing something for the transfer students? Why don't they have some transfer students come in as well? So definitely a lot of different mixed emotions up in the air from the Penn State community, but we'll have to see how it goes this weekend with social distancing guidelines and whatnot. Yeah, and I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there, Brooke. They, they said that it was for kids who haven't been in Beaver Stadium yet to get them that experience. You haven't been in Beaver Stadium yet, so for you to not be able to go as well, it just doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really add up, and it just feels so bad for these seniors again. So um, to have that taken away from them, I couldn't imagine what it would be like. We'll have to wait and see how Penn State football's last spring practice goes this upcoming weekend. And now, Seth has a special interview with Sam McGuire. Hello, everyone. I'm Jared Smith, and alongside me is... Alexis Yoder. And we are your host of Sports Speak which is a podcast from the Daily Collegian that talks about all the happenings in the Penn State sports world. So, hey, tune in, come in, give us a listen, and we do more than just talk about sports. We have Fred, a dragon. So if he's not a dragon, he's a crocodile. We haven't figured that out yet, but give us a listen. Welcome back to 5 Minutes. I'm Seth Engel. It's like 60 minutes, but shorter. Joining us today is Sam McGuire, a sophomore studying secondary education social studies here at Penn State. Sam recently got the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine, which has now been paused from being administered due to a few cases of blood clots in vaccinated individuals. How are you today, Sam? I'm doing good, thank you. No blood clots right now? Feeling not, as of, not as of now. <laughs> good to hear. All right, so my first question, pretty simple. When did you get vaccinated? I got vaccinated this past Friday, which the 8th? Is that the 8th? Maybe. I don't know, 8th or 9th uh, of April. <laughs> so with so many vaccines on the market, how did you land on getting the Johnson & Johnson one? Um, I landed on that one because it was the only one available to me to get in my area. Fair enough. And uh, how did you feel directly after getting this vaccine? Like day of? day of directly you, you I felt fine right after I mean you know I pinched but like that was it I didn't feel sore at all did you uh did you post a picture of your vaccination card on social I media? did not <laughs> I did take uh, pictures to send to my parents but you basically didn't even get vaccinated then I know <laughs> so what were your emotions after the news of Johnson and Johnson's potential blood clot side effect um, I had to laugh because I found out through a group me message and this girl was like freaking out and canceling her appointment. And I was like, oh, this is great. So I already got it. So am I going to die? Nice. Um, I wasn't too worried because I it, it said only six people out of everyone that took it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I wasn't too upset or anything. So compare, is this at all comparable to like your fears maybe early on about COVID-19, kind of unsure about the future? Um, I would say less so because um, like with COVID that was completely new. Um, meanwhile, like this is like now we're like, I mean, like it's a vaccine versus like the actual disease itself. So I, I felt all right about it. I didn't feel like I was in imminent danger. And did your friends like mock you at all about getting the Johnson and Johnson? Maybe oh yeah, I got a couple Pfizer Moderna friends who were like, "Well, you got the Fisher Price one." So, do you have any regrets now after this is all kind of said and done? Um, I would have liked to get Moderna or Pfizer, um, but I don't regret it because it's it's what I had available to me. There's no way I would have known about the blood clotting. And yeah, it's it's what was available. So I took it. I you, on, a, on a more serious note, what do you think this uh, 
should tell people about getting vaccines? Do, do you think they should tell them at all that, that it could be at all harmful or that everyone should kind of go out and, you know, still do their part? I mean, I think people should still get vaccinated. Obviously, like you want to weigh your options and like know what you're putting into your body. And I totally respect that. However, I don't think um, this instance is such a large thing to be too worried about to deter you from getting the vaccine, period. Perfect. I mean, that's, that's about all I, I have right now. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share? No, I'm good. But thanks. All right. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Sam. I um, hope you guys all get vaccinated and hope you guys don't get blood clots. Thanks for joining me. I'm Seth Engel. Hi, I'm Brooke Steig here with Hey Happy Valley and we're here to start off our game show. Okay, I'm here with Emily who is another freshman who just joined on campus. So this question might be difficult, but you're gonna have 30 seconds to answer and you could win a prize. So if you can name 10 buildings on Penn State's campus in 30 seconds, you'll win. Okay, Simmons, The Hub, Thomas Building, um, the Hepper Fitness Center, um, Atherton, Heart Ramp, Mifflin, um, Chase Hall, Stevens Hall. She got it. So <laughs> congratulations, you won a prize. And the freshmen are killing it right now. Welcome back to the Collegian Office. I'm Zach Lambert and this is my pick of the week. So this week I'm going back to the music industry and I'm not sure I would make it out of this office alive if I didn't pick Taylor Swift's new album, Fearless, Taylor's version. She basically re-released a bunch of songs from the original Fearless album, but she added some new songs too that she calls From the Vault. One of the best songs that's From the Vault is Mr. Perfectly Fine, but my favorite song on the album is still Love Story. If you haven't listened to it yet, you should definitely go check it out. Well, that wraps up our new segment for this week's episode of Hey Happy Valley. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more content. And finally, to wrap up the show, we have a special musical performance from Melody Muniz with her original song, Satellites, which will be out next month. Hi there, my name is Melody Muniz, and I'm a junior here at Penn State, double majoring in musical theater and psychology. And I'd love to share with you an original song I wrote called Satellites. Give me a parking lot, a few lights out.
Don't you think our words must be tired of traveling so far? Up and over and through just to get to your heart. I want to send love not bound by wires, smiles not stuck too deep, silence not encoded that you know how to read, but I can't go to you. Never dreamed to go a nowhere we could make feel like home. We'd pass the time all right, just you and I in our anywhere for the night. I'd give anything if we didn't have to talk through satellite.